Have you ever experienced something strange when you used your Windows computer? Maybe the strange déjà vu feeling hit you for no reason. You felt like you have seen some elements of your interface long time ago and now they are appearing again? You ask yourself, wait, I'm actually on my new Windows 11, why am I seeing these Windows XP buttons here? Because in fact, they are still the same operating system. Sort of. Searching deep into beautiful and modern Windows 11 Fluent Design interface, we can find a lot of really old elements, even from Windows 95. Starting from top, clicking more options in right-click menu brings Windows 10 selection menu window that in fact dates even earlier. Icons are the only difference in control panel from Windows 8 and 11. Meanwhile, settings app got a whole new fresh interface. Sending the folder to the zip package causes appearing a arrow progress bar straight from Windows Vista and 7. Installing a driver brings all the Windows XP transfer animation and going through more forgotten apps, like Charset Map for example, we can find that design doesn't change at all. This applies also for Registry Editor, Local Grout Policy Editor, Run, Services and more. Even icons from MS-DOS era are hidden in Windows 11 code to this day. And it's not only Windows 11 problem, we have to remind strange Windows 8 Metro design in Windows 10 start menu. Volume rocker is also taken straight from Windows 8. And going deeper, we can find big glossy Windows Vista bar inside Windows Fax and Scan app. Windows 8, 7 and Vista had struggled with exactly the same inconsistent interface elements as newer versions do nowadays. Why Windows user interface look like this? The answer is complicated and we have to take some history lesson. Let's go back to the 1993. The first Jurassic Park has a world premiere, highly controversial game titled Doom hit to the store shelves, Intel releases first Pentium processor and... So when they went looking around for a computing environment, it was serious business. They looked at OS2, they looked at Unix, but they settled on Windows NT for Microsoft. Why? Well, we'll try to find out today as we try on Windows NT on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Windows NT releases also in the same year and that's a really important moment for the future of Windows because from this point everything gonna change. Expect of the heart of Windows operating system, the kernel. Mike, I have Windows 3.1 running over here on my HP Vector. You have Windows NT running over there on your machine. They look almost identical. What, what is the difference? Really, Stuart, the idea was to make them look as much the same as was possible. They both use the same familiar program manager, and in fact, a lot of the tools, like the file manager, are exactly the same. In fact, if you could launch right, that I'll on launch your machine... I'll launch my file manager in 3.1, you launch yours in NT... You see, they're basically the same. New Windows releases was never a true successor of a previous one. They never was a new, standalone operating system created from scratch. They were just a nice package updates based on previous Windows releases. It doesn't mean that every release is totally identical system with another interface. They have a lot improvements over time, but the one thing that doesn't change to this day is Windows NT kernel, of course. To put it simply, the heart of your nice and fresh Windows 11 is in fact created in 1993 for Windows NT purposes. So why Microsoft choose marketing their software as a standalone product, you ask? It's just a business option they preferred more. Introducing Windows 10 in 2015, they claimed that's an ultimate system and from this point it's gonna improve only with updates. Yeah, we all know how things turned out later. Apple, for the other hand, changed their marketing tactic to updates in 2001, releasing macOS 10. And to this day, macOS improving is based on constantly updates rather than creating new standalone products. Having this in mind, we can finally talk about inconsistency of Windows user interface. Because as you guessed it, it's not only connected with old kernel situation, but with the entire system architecture. The problem is, from a developer point of view, that Windows is built from few different subsystems called frameworks, and every one of them was released in different time and with different design. The most important are classic Win32, 
and .NET forms, originally introduced in 1993, with mentioned above Windows NT. Novada is slightly upgraded and looking a bit like Windows 7. .NET WFP, definitely more advanced graphically than Win32, but from default, uses classic Win32 for no reason. WinRT, aka Universal Windows Platform, the modern one introduced with Windows 8 and Windows Phone. The Metro and Fluent design started here. So is Windows a one big Transformers put together with elements gathered from different years? Basically, yes. And it's done for a reason. Sometimes, when you want to open your favorite game or program, you have to run it in a special compatibility mode. As we can see, the variety of compatibility modes goes backwards even to the Windows 95. And that's the main reason why Windows is mixed from old and new elements. To keep the backward compatibility feature. To this day, big business corporations are using their favorite old programs and don't want to start a time-consuming and expensive procedure to replace old program with the new one. Also, a lot of publishers don't update their programs for years. If it works, then don't change it. Cutting off the backward compatibility would mean that millions of users would react with anger and frustrations. And from the business perspective, doing this kind of move is not the best option. So why Microsoft doesn't do anything to unify the aesthetic and design of old Windows elements like Apple does? Are they just lazy or they don't know how to do it? If your car is ugly, just paint it, right? Microsoft spends hundreds of dollars on research, artists, designers to provide the most modern and fresh experience to users. The good example is the new Bloom logo representing the diversity of Windows users and everyday tasks they perform using this system. They really care about aesthetic of the operating system and with experienced team of designers, they know how to do it right. The true answer of inconsistency in Windows user interface is that they just can't change certain elements due to complications with backwards compatibility. They unify as much as they can, but it's better to leave some elements the way they are and do not risk any instability in backwards compatibility. To sum up this complicated topic, I want to end this video with the Frank Camero quote People ignore design, that ignores people. So next time, when you notice some old element in your operating system, think about this video. What do you think about this topic? Let me know in the comments below if you saw any inconsistent elements in the Windows interface. Remember to hit like and subscribe button to cheer me up for next video. See ya! Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention Apple users. Your Mac OS Ventura heart, called XNU, is also dated to 1996. <laughs>